Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're going to start our playthrough of Legacy of Dragonhold. Now, if you're watching this right now, hold up. We need to make sure you're okay with some spoilers. This is a story-driven game, and so because of that, you might see things that you will see in your personal playthrough of this game. So, only if you're okay with some spoilers, keep watching. Otherwise, just watch the first video I did here um, for this game, or check out Adam from Rolling Solo. He does an unboxing video and kind of shows you the components. I'm going to show you a little bit about how the game plays. So we are going to do the first quest. Now there's tons of quests in this game, so it's not going to spoil the whole game, but it is going to spoil that first quest if you choose the same things that I choose. So just want to call you out on that to make sure that you are comfortable that you want to watch this. You're still here? Sweet. A couple things I want to mention before jumping in. First thing, I want to apologize that I said tribunal instead of tribal. It was too late at night when I was doing that playthrough, so <laughs> I was not reading the words correctly. So sorry about that. It's tribal, not tribunal. Second of all, you guys came up with tons of great names. I could, I was having the hardest time trying to decide which name to call our orc bard. So my wife and I actually went through all of them, and then we pared it down, and we decided to go with Glens because we feel like it just flows off of the tongue the easiest. And if I'm going to keep saying this name, you guys know how hard I have at pronouncing things. <laughs> so if this is easy to say and it sounds cool, that's what we decided to go with. So Glenn, thank you so much for the York of Donsmore. That's what our orc is going to be called. We wanted to give the Constellation Prize over to Doug Herring. Your bad blowhard. I loved it so much, but every time I say it, I start laughing. So I can't, I can't do that one because if, if we were doing this as a role-playing game and I was laughing every time I said my name, yeah, that doesn't work. So that's why we're going with York of Donsmore. Someone else mentioned that willpower might work better than devotion for our orc, since our orc is having to use his willpower to decide to go a different path towards the bard instead of being his clan leader. So I decided to change devotion to willpower. Willpower represents your mental and spiritual fortitude and the conviction you hold in your heart to carry through with your goals despite the challenge life or your enemies throw at you. Yeah, that just kind of totally makes sense for our orc bard he is going against what everyone else in his family and his friends would say that he should do and so he has to have strong willpower to do that last item to talk about is our stamina so remember the max amount you can have is 14 minus however many skills you have above five so we have six skills so we went down to 12 but since we are playing solo we get a bonus four for our total stamina so we are at 16 for our stamina which i think is pretty good for our orc i don't honestly know i haven't played this so i guess we'll find out so jumping back into our story everybody except for i think one or two people suggested that we want to hear a little bit more about these bandits so let's read 77 73 braxton strides beside you keeping an ever watchful eye on her eager companion not much. I've just heard from some travelers that a number of caravans have been ambushed while passing through. Valuable goods were taken, but the merchants and traders have been mostly unharmed. Mark story point S1. So what is a story point? I don't even know. Let's read this. Story points are abstract recordings of the decisions you make throughout your adventure. They allow future entries or future quests to play out differently depending on the decisions you've made. Story points are recorded on the story tracking sheet. Some effects, like the one above, instructs you to mark one or more story points. To mark a story point, locate it by referencing its letter and number, then mark that box with a check mark or an X. Some effects in future entries will be resolved differently if specific story points have been marked. Cool. So that's how we're going to differentiate our playthrough from anybody else's. So we'll mark S1 right here, if our pen works. There we go. Now we have another two options. We should hurry along before it gets dark. Or, Miriam, best you don't get too far ahead. So which one do you think our orc would say? As an orc, we're probably not too worried about the bandits. We, you know, have our didgeridoo. We're ready to take on some people. We know how to fight. We're probably more worried, of anything, about Miriam because Miriam's only a gnome. So probably we just want to make sure Miriam's okay. So let's go to 2808. 
The young gnome glances over her shoulder at you with a raised eyebrow. You're starting to sound like Braxton. She twirls to face you and walks backwards down the road in front of you. Despite my size, I am quite capable of protecting myself, you know. Braxton chuckles warmly to herself. I believe our new friend is worried for you not because of your size, but because of your nature. Even though you can protect yourself, try not to worry us too much. Okay, so now we're going to mark story point R6 and then read entry 1340. R6 is right here, so we'll mark that. As you speak with your traveling companions, small trees begin to dot the terrain around you. Tall grass gives way to brush, and you soon find yourself at the edge of the forest. Time passes. What does that mean? Throughout your adventures, you will track the passage of time on the tracking sheet for the current quest. Each unit of time represents an abstract amount of time that could be anything from a few minutes to multiple hours, depending on the current quest. When time passes, mark one box of time with a check mark or an X. Some effects in future entries will reference how much time has passed or if a specific amount of time has passed. Wow, so far I'm really liking how this is working. So here's our to new roads tracking sheet, and we have had our first time pass. So we'll crop, put an X there. As you walk, you take the chance to become better acquainted with your fellow travelers. Ask Miriam what she plans to do in Dragonhold. Ask Braxton what she plans to do in Dragonhold. So Braxton is an orc, and we're an orc, so I think we'd feel the most comfortable talking to Braxton. So let's see, this option does not exhaust your activation token. Oh, well, we don't have to worry about that. Mark story point N3 and read entry 4945. I think we would talk to Braxton just because we could probably relate to him, re relate to her more. Here's N3. Let's put an X in there. Braxton smiles gently, nodding her head in Miriam's direction. I will continue to protect our friend Miriam for as long as she requires my services. As you may have noticed, looking after her does not leave me much time for anything else. I resemble that mark, calls Miriam. After that, I'm not certain. I was not certain what to do with myself before meeting Miriam either. I suppose I will travel to a larger city and try and find employment. Whoa, this is cool. Tons of different options here. We've got Ask Braxton about her past adventures. We've got Ask Braxton about how she met Miriam. Kind of interested in that. Tell Braxton about your past adventures. That requires deception or performance. We do have performance as a skill. Ask Braxton which lord she served. Um, that We need empathy or history. We don't have that. We have um, ask Braxton about her military training. History or military, don't have either of those. Or show Braxton how to foil sleight of hand. Oh, that was cool. Requires awareness or thievery. Yeah, I don't have those either. I'm kind of thinking, you know, we are a bard, so we probably would do uh, this past adventure, tell him about our past adventure, and maybe play the didgeridoo for her as well. So let's go to 1984. Braxton listens to your tales of your exploits politely, nodding at the appropriate points and asking a handful of clarifying questions. I can tell you're quite accomplished, she says. Marion and I are lucky to be traveling with you. You get the distinct impression that she is humoring you. Mark story points S2 and W3, or if two or more time has passed, no, nope, otherwise, read entry 7616. So if we feel like she's just humoring us, I think we can just mark S2 and W3. Then we can read entry 7616, or we can just read 7616. The way she says that does totally sound like she's patronizing us, so I think I'm going to mark story points S2 and W3. Let's see, here is S2, and here is W3. I need to get a new pen. This thing only sometimes is working. So now, if two or more time has passed, we would do this, but we've only had one time, so we can just go to 7616. You continue down the road, and the sky overhead is soon obscured by the foliage of the forest canopy. Streams of sunlight dance around you as a gentle breeze shakes the leafy ceiling. Miriam skips forward and spins through the shafts of light, smiling and laughing. It would be best if you stayed close. Becoming lost in the woods is all too common for those not accustomed to traveling without sun or moon to guide them. Despite the orc's warning, Braxton makes no additional effort to keep pace with the playful gnome. If story point N3 is marked... Read entry 4389. Well, guess what? We have checked that. That's so cool. Okay, so we have to go to 4389. You change the subject, electing to ask Braxton what she knows about Dragonhold. I've never been to Dragonhold myself, says Braxton. Lord Kaler's lands were west of here, so I never had occasion to visit. I did hear that the village has a fine inn. You heard that from me, calls Miriam. 
Marion's aunt runs the place, says Braxton with a smile. Apart from that, I think the place is rather unremarkable. A small collection of houses surrounded by farms and orchards. She frowns and drums her finger on the hilt of her sword, looking all around. Well, there was that one story about a brave hero that could freeze a dragon's flames in its throat, but I think that was just a story. Braxton laps into a comfortable silence for some time. We can ask Braxton about her family, or ask Braxton about orcs, which is silly because we're an orc, or leave Braxton to her thoughts. I don't think our orc is one to press about family, especially to another orc, so I think we're going to leave her to her thoughts. Let's move to 7598. Don't mind her, Miriam says to you in a hushed voice. Braxton isn't much for socializing. Don't take it personally. I'm sure she'll warm up to you over time. If two or more time has passed, which it hasn't, otherwise we're going to read 3859. Eventine Forest is an intimidating landmark, and you can see why Braxton was concerned. Within an hour of entering the forest, the thin, young trees give way to ancient, gnarled guardians. The light, leafy canopy transforms into an oppressive shroud that cloaks the road in darkness, even during the most sunny of days. So now we have our second time pass. So it seems like, to me, they kind of have you move around within the story. You can ask questions until you hit that second time pass, and now we're going to have some sort of event happen, I'm, I'm assuming. In the darkness of Eventine Forest, a chilling stillness reigns, and even bird songs are drowned out by silence. You continue onward, Miriam's unusual banter quieted by her new mood, one part fascination and one part fear. Braxton keeps an ever-vigilant eye on the surroundings, her hand now resting on the pummel of her blade at her waist. You soon come to a stop when you catch up to Miriam. She is glancing down what appears to be a small game trail that branches away from the main road. Up ahead, you see that a number of fallen trees are blocking your path. That is never a good sign, you guys. That's never a good sign. An old crossroad signpost marks the split, but the wood is too rotted and the writing is too indecipherable. What do we do now? It doesn't seem like Lady Regina has been alerted yet, Braxton strains to look over the fallen trees. We could clear the road ourselves or send word to Lady Regina once we reach Dragonhold. We could try this trail, offers Miriam. Maybe it's connected to the main road on the other side. <laughs> yeah, right. You know it's not. Let's see. Uh, we could either scout along the game trail and report pack, climb over the trees and continue on the main road, or clear the road of debris before continuing. We have two orcs in our group two orcs don't you think we could clear the debris i mean we're strong we've got stamina let's do 3962 braxton produces an axe from her baggage and you set to work clearing the trees from the road breaking each tree down into pieces small enough to move isn't complicated but it is tiring your shoulders burn from swinging the axe and your back aches from dragging the enormous tree limbs off to the side Miriam busies herself with the smaller branches. When only larger branches remain, she helps by singing a gnomish working song that seems to include invented ver verses mocking you, Braxton, herself, gnomes in general, Eventide Forest, and any other subject that catches her fancy. Two time passes. Holy moly, I didn't think of that. You each lose one stamina. You each lose two additional stamina unless you have endurance as a skill. Oh, I think I do have endurance as a skill. Before we do that, let's read this. Stamina is a measure of how much you can push yourself or resist strain or damage. Excessive amounts of physical labor, prolonged exposure to harsh conditions, and physical damage suffered in combat all cause you to lose stamina. Your maximum stamina was determined during character creation and should be recorded on your character sheet. Whenever you lose stamina, subtract that amount from your current stamina, recording your current stamina separate from your maximum stamina. If your current stamina drops to zero, one of your skills will be disabled and you will recover one stamina. A disabled skill cannot be used until an effect allows you to recover that skill. Oh, okay. So it looks like we're going to go from 16 down to 15. And why it's only 15 is because we certainly do have the endurance skill. So I think overall it was not a bad idea, but we just lost two time. And I don't know how big of an importance that is. Marking two more time puts us all the way past three and four. Gosh, we spent a lot of time doing that. I thought with two orcs we could go faster. Come on. <sighs> At length, you and Braxton roll the last and largest of the tree trunks to rest against the side of the road, then collapse atop it for a brief rest. You are done. Good work, says Miriam, offering you each a drink of water from a tin cup. We should mention this in Dragonhold. It'll really help me get my business off the ground if people know I helped clear the road. Braxton glances at you over her drink, but says nothing. 
mark story point F7, and then read entry 8557. Here's F7. After following the winding road for what feels like hours, you begin to fear that you are traveling in circles. Just as you are about to suggest turning back, Miriam calls out from beyond the next bend. There's a clearing up here. As you round the bend, you see Miriam staring up at a single massive tree that stands alone in the center of a clearing, some 20 paces across. Although the great oak's canopy is just as thick as anywhere else in the forest, its branches reach well above the tops of the surrounding trees, affording you a view of the sky at the edges of the clearing. If three or more time has passed, heck yeah, we're already at time four, read entry 3549. It's already night! No wonder I feel so tired! Miriam mutters with a yawn. Sure enough, when you look up, you see stars sparkling brightly in the vast emptiness of the night sky. You note how brilliant they seem so far from torchlight of the city. At the edges of the clearing, several paths cut through the dense trees, leading away from the great oak in different directions. Only a few seem well-traveled, but none are marked by signs. Braxton, too, has noticed the myriad options for further travel. We should get our bearings before making camp for the night. Miriam rolls her eyes at Braxton's suggestion. We can use the sun as our guide in the morning. I'm going to go sleep. With that, she takes out a bedroll and makes camp at the base of the great oak. So we can either determine your heading by ob observing the stars. We don't have the arcana, devotion, or survival skill. Oh man, we got rid of the devotion. <laughs> Convince Miriam to read the stars before she sleeps. If we had empathy or persuasion... We don't really have either of those. We could climb the Great Oak. That requires agility or athletics. And we don't have either one of those. Or we can leave the navigation to Braxton and turn in for the night. Yeah, that's, that's all we can do. I mean, there isn't anything else we can do. So we're going to read 3562. Braxton sighs and places her pack and heavy shield at the base of the oak tree. I will see if I can get our bearings from higher up in the tree, she says. With that, she begins to climb. After a little while, she drops back down again and tosses a small carved wooden statuette to Marin. I found dozens of these up at the bows of the tree. Little scraps of paper with stories written on them, too. Did you also find what way to go? asked Miriam, holding the statue up into the moonlight for a better look. Yes, I could see the beacon tower in Dragonhold quite clearly from up here. Braxton bends down and retrieves her shield. What about the statuette? What do you make of it? I'm not sure, said Miriam. I think this was carved by a human or an orc, too rough to be made by an elf. Probably just some harmless local custom. Miriam tosses the trinket to you, looks up and looks up at Braxton. You can put your shield down. Mark story point L1. You gain the wooden trinket item B, and then read entry 8549. But let's read about items quick. Some effects cause you to gain items. To gain an item, record its item name on your character sheet. Then search the item deck for the item card with the matching identifier, shown in parentheses above. Keep the item card face up with your character sheet. For instance, to resolve the effect above, record a wooden trinket on your character sheet. Then search the item card deck for the item card with B printed on its back and place that item card face up by your character sheet. When searching the item deck, be sure to not look at the faces of any of the other, any other of the item cards. First thing, let's mark L1. Nice. And here's our wooden trinket. You found this intricate wooden trinket at the Great Oak in Eventine Forest. It looks quite old. A heart is carved into the wood containing the letters T and U. Ooh, that's probably something important. We'll also write wooden, if I can write well on here, sorry, wooden trinket there we go right here on our items you assist braxton in gathering some kindling and start a small campfire a few paces from the great oak while you work you can hear miriam humming softly to herself you set out your bedroll and relax although you are all tired a brief chat around the campfire is not an unwelcome event we could ask miriam what she plans to do in dragonhold it requires story point n3 to be marked well it just so happens n3 is marked sweet so we could do that we could ask braxton braxton what she's doing but we kind of have already asked that so that's why e7 is not marked we can't do that or we could just go straight to sleep we could mark story point h3 and then go and read entry 1096 i always like having more information than less information and i don't think our orc yorick of dunsmore would be any different so why don't we talk to miriam I'm glad you asked, bubbled Miriam. I'm going to set up the finest apothecary shop that Dragonhold has ever seen. I'll brew potions and sell remedies and make lots of money. 
She nods, tossing a vial of pink liquid into the air, catching it and balancing it on her finger for no particular reason. My aunt can help me get started. She already runs the best inn in town, and she's a fantastic tailor, too. Miriam flourishes her half cape and brightly colored tunic. We could ask Miriam what type of potion she brews, or ask Miriam about her family, or exchange brewing recipes with Miriam. We don't have alchemy, so we can't do that. Compliment Miriam's attire and inquire about its maker. That's awesome. We don't have craft craftsmanship or empathy, so we can't do that one. Tell Miriam what you know of Dragonhold. We could a uh, Dragonhold's markets, and we could do that one because we have Streetwise. Or educate Miriam on methods for barter and trade. That requires persuasion or Streetwise. So we could do one, these two, or these two. Why don't we use our streetwise skill here and tell her a little bit about Dragonhold's markets. I'm sure we know quite a bit after going to bunches of different bars and places that we've played our didgeridoo, we've heard a lot about the markets in Dragonhold's. You tell Miriam that Dragonhold used to have a successful apothecary shop, one that was well known in the area. Yes, says Miriam. Aunt Safi told me. She says that the shop is standing vacant, so I should be able to buy cheap. Who knows, maybe the last apothecary left some recipes or something interesting behind. Miriam claps her hands, evidently delighted at her stroke of good luck. You almost don't want to tell her what happened to the last apothecary to work in Dragonhold, but you know you must tell her about the man's grisly fate. Miriam does not seem quite as distressed as you might have thought she would be. That's interesting, she says. I wonder why Aunt Safi never told me that. Oh well, it's not as if I'm going to be doing anything that foolhardy once I take the place over, and I'm sure all that blood got washed out by now. Now I want to know what the heck happened here. Okay, we mark story points K6 and M3, and then if two or more time has passed, we go to 7094. Here's K6 and M3. What about you, asks Miriam. What are you planning to do in Dragonhold? Before you can answer, she hunches over and crooks one finger like a sinister hook, putting a sneer into her voice. Are you seeking vengeance on a terrible foe? Just as quickly it, she swoons, throwing one hand artfully over her forehead. Or are you in search of love? Miriam tumbles backward over a log with a squawk. She grins at you from a pile of sticks and leaves. Or maybe it's just a, cha a chance encounter. She continues to talk about everything and nothing before finally pausing for breath. So now we can ask Miriam about Eventide Forest, or we can ask Miriam how she met Braxton, I'm kind of interested in that, or ask Miriam about gnomes, I'm also interested in that. I'm, I think I'm going to stop here, I think we're at least at a half an hour at this point, so I'm going to stop, let me know what you think uh, York of Donsmore would choose to ask um, Miriam about, and we'll continue with our story in our next episode. As always, thank you so much for watching, hope you guys are enjoying this, I am, I mean this is... This is definitely interesting. It's, it is definitely narrative. That's what we're seeing. So I'm enjoying the story. I'm kind of curious how it's going to play out. And I'm curious to see if anyone else has played this, if they've had a totally different experience in this first scenario so far. But yes, thanks so much, and I will see you in the next episode.